We'll stick with the sporting theme. Time now, 7.38. The popularity of English Premier League football around the world means that the television rights to show it are worth billions of pounds. But with the rise of social media, more fans are filming matches that they've been to and sharing the best bits online. Well, the Premier League is keen to put a stop to this and has issued a warning to fans ahead of the new season. Let's discuss this now with the sports rights lawyer Mark Yaffe and we're joined from Cardiff by Malcolm Clark, who's chairman of the Football Supporters Federation. If I can start with you, I mean, what do you make of this? Uh, well, we think this may well be completely over the top. Um, if supporters were coming in and using equipment to record a whole game and trying to sell that in competition to the uh, Premier League's media partners, that would be a different situation. But. Uh, I saw yesterday that a Premier League spokesman said this may make us look like spoil sports, but we have to protect our intellectual property. Well, yes, it does make you look like spoil sports, and I think you should recognise that uh, the world has changed with social media, and this could actually be a benefit to the Premier League because it promotes the uh, product and promotes football. Mark, what are the rules? Well, th th there's no doubt that uh, by streaming live football matches and uploading them on social media, th that that does constitute a breach of copyright. I think the challenge, though, for the Premier League is actually enforcing that, um, especially um, via social media. So I, I think the rules are clear. The challenge is, practically, can they enforce it? I mean, the, the thought is by many fans that it's six seconds, it loaded up on one particular website, Vine. It, it, it's harmless, but there's a lot of money, as we mentioned, a lot of money has gone into buying the rights by various broadcasters and uh, the Premier League as well. How can it enforce this? Well, en enforcing it is the real challenge and we've seen probably over the past few years how the, the Premier League has taken steps in various creative ways uh, to protect uh, the, its broadcasting rights. Firstly, um, the attack on pub owners. Um, they had to use a, a very creative aspect of the law in order to um, actually in, um, claim copyright in the logo um, of the screening, not actually the screening itself. Uh, they moved on from that um, when uh, trying to stop online streaming and they actually brought action against uh, internet service providers, not the actual domain name owners themselves. And here's the next challenge where you may have tens of thousands of, of, of football fans uploading uh, videos and I think what's very poignant about the statement uh, is that they're looking for a collaborative effort. Um, I think they, they, they recognise uh, that they need to work with social media uh, in order to try and curb it and I think actually it's a plea for a culture change rather than a legal threat. Malcolm, talking about this cultural change, I mean, do you accept that the Premier League, it, it is a business, the TV rights are an absolutely crucial part of that business, and it, it's only right that the online sales as well should be t taken seriously by, by, by fans? Yeah, but I don't think the kind of things that we're talking about, about uploading brief clips, is in any way a threat to the Premier League's media rights. Quite frankly, I think the Premier League executives ought to be worried about other things particularly things like ticket prices, which we were marching on yesterday to the Premier League headquarters, uh, so that the game remains accessible to all. And uh, many of these clips that go on YouTube and things actually promote the game. Uh, and, of course, I think the other thing is that some of the laws here are outdated in terms of the modern social media environment, and uh, they may be trying to use totally inappropriate and outdated laws to... Uh, tackle people who are but, not but, really a threat the to them League, at all. But the Premier League are asking fans at this stage to respect things. You, you're saying there should be a law brought in. That, that, that plenty of people would say, well, actually, that goes too far. No, I'm not saying a law should be brought in. I'm, I'm saying that the existing laws haven't kept pace with social media. But quite frankly, ordinary fans videoing a, a moment of excitement or some other point of interest and putting it on YouTube or whatever is not a threat to the Premier League's media rights. Well, the Premier uh, League... The, sorry to interrupt you, Malcolm. The Premier League has said in a statement that fans can access content online. This isn't a case of fans not being able to see the goals. Um, they're available online with the Sun or the Times goal app. Is that, is that not fair? Is that not enough for fans? I just think that they need to start worrying about bigger problems in the game than this. Um, as, al as always, they're coming out with threatening statements against ordinary fans who are just enjoying themselves and actually trying to promote football. That's the irony of this. We they've made various threats about, I, I see they've threat said they're going to have vine crawlers, whatever they are. It sounds like uh, a rather unpleasant insect. Um, but, but let's relax a bit. Let's recognise that social media has altered the world. 
and that what ordinary fans are simply doing is trying to promote football, and that's a good thing. Uh, Mark, we've had an email from Craig who says the extortion of prices the Premier League clubs charge for admission uh, when you get to the ground. Do you think the least they could do is let the fans take a few videos? But that's not actually what we're talking about. That, that's not the point at all. I mean, the law hasn't changed here. I think Malcolm's absolutely right that, that the Premier League are having to use a, a piece of legislation from 1988 and now try and use it in, in, in the modern era to deal with social media. The law hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is the ability for fans to effectively stream live football matches themselves. And that's where I think the Premier League has a legitimate concern. Mark Yaffe, thanks very much for joining us, explaining it, the law surrounding this. Malcolm Clark, Chair of the Football Supporters Federation, thank you very much for giving us your thank views you. on breakfast. Good to see you. Thanks. It's coming up to a quarter to eight. You're watching Breakfast.